Well, I uh, appreciate uh, all of you coming today, and uh, we're down here to talk about the uh, end of the 2016 uh, session of the Indiana General Assembly. I'm joined by State Representative Gail Reekin uh, from here in Evansville. Let me start by thanking her for her service. Uh, Gail's been a longtime friend and such a longtime public servant to the people of Evansville, and I want to, Gail, just publicly thank you for everything you've done for, for this community and for our state. Uh, Gail's been a champion on so many issues. And this session, we're here to talk about uh, the, the positives and the negatives. Uh, and really, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Gail soon to talk about uh, some things that she felt were positive this session. But I'm also here to talk about uh, the absent leadership of Governor Pence, uh, talking about uh, infrastructure, education, and the issue concerning civil rights. Uh, the governor just was absent this session, and there were a lot of missed opportunities uh, in this session of the General Assembly. So we're here to talk about that, but let me first turn it over to Representative Reekin uh, to give her assessment of the session, and then I'll, I'll pick it back up. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's one of the last things I think I, I probably will be able to do, and I appreciate the opportunity to support the, the agenda that I think was so important in, in Indianapolis. Um, I, I would say it would be, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, first of all, children's issues, and I think we did make some headway on children's issues. Uh, but those issues that uh, seem to be really the hot buttons are the uh, infrastructure, education, and civil rights. So let, let me touch a little bit on that. I really thought we were going to come to some exciting um, opportunities in the LGBT um, issue, but it didn't happen. Uh, what, we, what we did get was a lot of discussion and a bill that was turned down in the Senate. Uh, Senator Holdman did all he could. And the one bill that wasn't recognized uh, for hearing in the uh, House was just a bill that would enhance a, cr a hate crime. And even that was turned down for discussion, and I, I, I hate that. Um, the infrastructure issue is one that is really close to home. Uh, we must make sure that we improve our roads. And one of the conditions that I feel is that the returned uh, local option income money must be used to augment the projects out there 75% of it is to be used for our roads, and it needs to be for new projects, needs to be for projects that um, are long-lasting, and it should not be used to bolster up a deficit spending or uh, in a general fund, but needs to needs to be used for the, the ad, 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 advancement of our, our road program. Uh, it is also something that I think we, we should understand that we're going to have an increase over a period of years not only we're going to have a bump this year with the increase but over a long period of time we're going to see more of that local option income money come back to to evansville there's about six million this year that's going to come in may to the county and about three million of that comes to the city um, in that bill as well it's exciting that we're going to see the regional cities issue finally put to rest uh, we will be getting our 42 million as well as South Bend and Fort Wayne and that is something that is exciting for not just Evansville but our area. I believe about 60% of that money is going to be used outside of Vanderburg County and it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us to, uh, to grow. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention something about education as well. Started off real good. Um, ISTEP is going to be gone in 2017. It's been a headache and, a, and an absolute disaster in the classroom. Just this last weekend at Meet Your Legislatures, uh, one of the teachers uh, got teary-eyed over uh, the, the anxiety of his students in his classroom. And we're going to see that, uh, see that whole ISTEP testing gone. But on the other end of it, a blue ribbon commission that Glenda Ritz established for the ISTEP was not even honored in um, the discussions or any of the agenda, the Republican majority agenda for improvement in our school system, and I hated that. Plus, we're going to see that vouchers are going to be expanded. You can now apply for the voucher for the second semester uh, when it was only that first uh, semester. So we've had a, a mixed bag. I think there are initiatives that have started, and I look forward to seeing that whoever uh, takes my position in the fall continues with a positive agenda for our area. Thank, Thank you, Representative Rekin. I just said, uh, add to what she said, I think uh, going back to where there were some missed opportunities this session with the infrastructure bill, uh, the Republican supermajorities listened to Gail Rekin and listened to our Democrats and put together a bill that ended up being bipartisan. So that was a, uh, a positive. Uh, however, it's not 
long term. And uh, our Democrats fought for ideas, fought to make sure there were no new taxes, no new tolls on that bill. It became bipartisan and passed, but we still need a long-term fix to our infrastructure. Four years ago, John Gregg had a plan, a long-term fix to our state's infrastructure. Uh, Mike Pence had no plan until last fall after we saw uh, at least four different crises around the state. And the I-70 interchange at, 40, at US-41, uh, $70 million spent on faulty asphalt. I-65 being closed for a month. Crisis after crisis propelled Mike Pence to come up with an infrastructure plan, and only after that. And then they ended up listening to House Democrats. Representative Rekin mentioned, mentioned education. Uh, Gail Re or, uh, uh, Glenda Ritz, excuse me, 18 months ago warned the governor that I-STEP scores were gonna impact the morale and the scores and the the atmosphere in our schools 18 months ago she said this republicans listened to glenda ritz and passed the hold harmless legislation and got rid of i-step the issue concerning civil rights the fact that it is still legal in this state to evict fire or not serve someone if they're a member of the lgbt community is wrong and this is failed leadership on behalf of governor pence and there were a lot of opportunities this session that were missed so we are here to talk about those things while there were some bright spots. I want to thank again Gail Reekin and the House Democrats for their leadership and all of our Democrats in the General Assembly. They were listened to, but they were listened to in an election year. And it's important that we are holding the supermajorities and Governor Pence accountable because there are a lot of things that weren't done that should have been done long before now. So that is our message that we are down here talking about today. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, guys? Um, are you endorsing anybody for your spot? No, we have uh, some talented folks who are in the race, and um, I think we'll, we'll wait to see what the positions are and, and uh, uh, what happens in the May primary. But I do feel that we have some, some great talent that is, is looking for uh, this position. So we'll just wait and see what the public wants. I just hope they get to the polls. That's the important thing. We've got to vote. And we've got to find people who can stimulate that and, and encourage people to come out and vote. Thank you, guys.